4-3. We're live in L.A. This is The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening live. iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, FS1, Joy Taylor. By the way, cold and flu season. Try Vic Sinex nasal spray. A couple of squirts up there. 12 hours. Congestion strikes. Vic Sinex nasal spray. Uh, all sorts of stuff going on. I Jay Glazer was on earlier, Joy. And Jay Glazer believes Odell Beckham Jr. will be moved. Uh, I My gut feeling is on this Odell Beckham thing, I'm just, I'm reading things online right now from people I trust. The New York Giants are taking calls on Odell Beckham. I talked to Odell Beckham for 20 minutes two weeks ago. Uh, he's not anti-Giants. He would not say no to a new environment. I think that's fair for me to say. He's not looking to move, but he would embrace a move. Uh, Jay Glazer came on earlier and said, Odell Beckham Jr., divorce seems very real. Just keep your eye on that because I think it's happening. By the way, The Herd is also on uh, Channel 83 Sirius XM, so check it out. 15 minutes, Dante Jones joins us. Uh, talk some NBA. Well, so Antonio Brown, uh, we thought he was going to get traded last week, but he wasn't. Then he ended up getting traded to the Raiders over the weekend, and everyone sees it as a win. But I'm not so sure. First of all, uh, this entire NFL, there's a salary cap. This is not baseball. There's a salary cap. So everything comes down to value. The current dynasty in the NFL is the Patriots. They get value out of everybody, including their greatest of all time quarterback, Tom Brady. He's about the 18th highest paid, 12th highest paid quarterback in the NFL, somewhere in the middle of the league. So even with their star player, they get value. There is no chance for the Raiders to get value with this contract. I'm not saying it's a disaster, but this is like buying a Bentley. You may say it's worth every penny, but there's no value with it. You're not getting a deal on a Bentley. This contract is a massive deal for a perimeter player. This deal only works for the Raiders because they gave up draft picks and they're a rebuilding team. Rebuilding teams don't give up draft picks. This only works for the Raiders. If Antonio Brown, for what they paid him, is great for three straight years, elevates not only himself but Derek Carr in the offense, stays healthy and happy and is never disgruntled. A lot of big ifs. Uh, by the way... He's leaving a locker room that's averaged 10 and a half wins since he's been there. And he's entering a locker room that's averaged six and a half wins since he entered the league. You think he's going to be happy? You don't ever think he'll be frustrated? Let me ask any of you listening or watching today. Ever worked at a good company? Then you make a little more money and go to a bad company? Gets frustrating, doesn't it? People around you aren't as better. Bosses aren't as smart. Coworkers aren't as talented. This is what I don't understand is that you had Amari Cooper, and now you have Antonio Brown. Let's equate them to sports cars. Flashy, fun, not as good in the winter. So Amari Cooper had less miles on him, was cheaper, and had no previous injuries with the transmission, with the engine. Antonio Brown is older, had more miles on the car, way more expensive, and got into a, got into a crash recently. Why wouldn't I just keep the cheaper, younger sports car? I mean, there's like a salary cap in the NFL. There's a speed limit, 65 miles an hour. If Antonio Brown can get to 65 faster than Amari Cooper can get to 65, congrats. But they both get open, and they're both fast, and they're both flashy, and they both get first downs. This feels like the Raiders are just making stuff up to me. This was not a long-term plan. This feels like they're trying to sell tickets. This is not some well-thought-out plan. Antonio Brown wasn't on the market three months ago. They got rid of Khalil Mack. They got rid of Amari Cooper. They looked like they were adopting the New England Patriots style of football. Pay your quarterback, although don't pay him top five salary. Get rid of stars, accumulate draft picks, and have a really solid roster. And then all of a sudden this weekend, maybe the ticket sales aren't going well in Vegas Maybe John Gruden's trying to win the locker room. Let's pay for a 31-year-old wide receiver who's got a lot of miles, who's got a lot of ego, and doesn't really fit the plan we kept selling to our locker room a year ago. I mean, I'm happy for Antonio Brown. You know, I'm happy for all athletes who make money. This is not an anti-Antonio Brown thing. But this only works for the Raiders. 
if for all three years he's just unbelievable and there's no complaints and he elevates Derek Carr and he stays healthy and good luck. So, you know, you can say what you want about the Pittsburgh Steelers. They paid nothing for Antonio Brown for three to four years. They got him in the sixth round. And then when they had to pay him, they still didn't pay him great. Antonio Brown was underpaid his entire time in Pittsburgh. Then they got rid of him and got two picks. Now, for this year, a little bit of a, you know, capital gains tax, if you will, on that stock. They got to pay a big chunk of his salary for a year. But, you know, this morning, everybody's poo-pooing the Pittsburgh Steelers. And my takeaway is, folks, the dream of every general manager in this league is to find a six-round player who becomes a Hall of Famer. And then when you actually do have to sign him, you still don't make him a top 15, top 20 paid wide receiver. All the Steelers did on Antonio Brown is get, 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 and they didn't give much. I get why he's frustrated. Well, I get why Antonio Brown was frustrated. He'd been the best wide receiver in the league, arguably, for three years, and he's not getting paid like it. And they got him on the cheap coming out of college, and they just got two picks for him. The Steelers have a history of working those third and fifth round picks into players. I put it up here on the board for our FS1 viewers. Since he came into the league, they found seven or eight guys after the third round third round or later that can play that's not the Steelers issue and I'm not I'm I'm happy for Antonio Brown and I think he'll be a nice player for the Raiders but this deal only works for the Raiders if he is just absolutely happy and healthy and hits a home run for three straight years there's no value in the NFL paying a wide receiver 16 17 million the Steelers got a complete deal on Antonio Brown breaking into the league they still got a good deal with his first big contract and they let him go, and they get two more picks. I'm on that side. Let me shift to this. Um, one of the great things about sports is that it gives us the impossible and the improbable. Things that would, would seem ludicrous become reality. If I would have told you a month before it happened, hey, Michael Jordan's the best basketball player in the world. He's going to quit and go play minor league baseball. Hot take, clickbait, you're just trying to get big. No, it happened. If I was going to tell you, so listen, Tiger Woods is 32 in his prime. In like a week, he's never going to win another major. Going to have like 30 affairs. Hot take, that is exactly what happened. Sports gives us the impossible. Hey, George Foreman, He's fat now. He's going to come back into boxing and become heavyweight champion of the world. Eh. Oh, that happened. That's why we love sports. That's why we love it. So there's this guard. He's a skinny kid. His dad was a decent NBA player. He plays at Davidson. He's going to come into the NBA, and he's going to revolutionize the sport. Yeah, that, that happened, Steph Curry. That's why I love sports. So Jeff Van Gundy's on TV this weekend. And he says something, and I love his courage to say something, which I agree with him, but it's going to get pushed back and people are going to rip him and they're going to roll their eyes. But MJ played minor league baseball. The little kid from Davidson revolutionized basketball. George Foreman came out of retirement to become heavyweight champ. And Tiger Woods at 32, unraveled and never won another major. So here's what Jeff Van Gundy said during a Laker broadcast. They, they have to rebuild this roster, right? And to me, it could be a trade, you know, for an Anthony Davis, or I think they need to explore trading LeBron for getting as much as they can. What are you doing? Seriously. No, seriously, <laughs> I, what are you doing? No, the, you got to get on the right timeline. I'm going to say, if I could trade him for the Clippers into cap space, which would give me a better chance to get Durant or Kawhi Leonard, would I not do that? Okay, the, LeBron James is not getting traded, okay? you got to put everything on the no, table. No, you can't. Mike, why are we even entertaining this, man? Why? I don't understand how you would... Why would you take anything off the table? You'd have to get a home run deal, but if you go to a, a contender and you can get a home run, you do whatever you have to do to get better. You need a day off. <laughs> okay, by the way, what does CEO say when the company is struggling? And they invite all the vice president in the room, men, women, old, young. Here's what CEOs say. Everything's on the table. Give me ideas. 
Folks, I don't know if you noticed this weekend, but Brandon Ingram, talented, not great, but good young player, has a medical condition that was discovered. He is no longer a trade piece. Lonzo Ball, by the way, it was announced this weekend, is out for the rest of the year, meaning he has now missed as many games as he's played in his first two years in the NBA. They cannot trade for Anthony Davis. It's over. They don't have the assets. The number one asset they have is LeBron. The number two asset they have is Kyle Kuzma shot 31% from threes. Their number three asset is cross your fingers, maybe a lottery draft pick. You've got to consider everything. It's now about crossing fingers, hoping Kyrie Irving befriends LeBron again. Not going to happen. Hoping Kevin Durant leaves and decides to go to the lousy Lakers from the great Warriors. Not going to happen. Kawhi Leonard, no, put an end to that story this weekend. Again, another source saying he's not going to be a Laker. Clay Thompson, oh, please, pipe dream. You've got to consider everything. And LeBron is by far and away the one piece that could land you multiple draft picks and multiple players. Hell, there could be a team out there that would just want him for the the merchandising, for the brand. But Jeff Van Gundy, tip of the cap for having the guts to say something that will get pushed back on. But Steph Curry, George Foreman, Tiger Woods never winning again. Miracle on ice. That's why we love sports. Crazy stuff not only happens, it happens frequently. And by the way, I just saw my phone. I got a little alert. This is huge NFL news. Malik Jackson, Jaguars, three years, 30 million with the Philadelphia Eagles. Lord, that's a good get. So now that lining up next to Fletcher Cox. So now the Philadelphia Eagles have Malik Jackson, who's a 29 year old kid can really play, been a pro bowler (laughs) next to Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham and Derek Barnett. And by the way, reportedly they're going to draft another defensive lineman in the draft. It's the richest defensive line draft in 25 years. God, by the way, it was down to Philadelphia and green Bay. Once again, Packers came up short. Lord, Philadelphia is going to have the best defensive line in the NFL. Good Lord. Fletcher Cox, Malik Jackson, Brandon Graham, and Derek Barnett. Chris Long's a backup. Man, you talk about, that is a great pickup. 29-year-old kid, got three years left. Uh, You know, that, that Howie Roseman knows what he's doing running the Philadelphia Eagles. That defensive line is a nightmare. Yeah, you don't want you don't want anything to do. People last year freaked out over Indomic and Sue and Aaron Donald. That defensive line in LA doesn't even compare to the Eagles defensive line. Wow. And they're gonna draft another one. Man, it's it's hard not to like Philadelphia. If you got four teams next year you like, and everybody likes Kansas City, and I don't disagree, and I think New England will be good, and I don't disagree, you got to put Philadelphia right up next to them. Man, that is an incredible defensive line. It's like pro bowlers everywhere. Fletcher Cox, one of the best 15 players in the league. Now you can't double him. That's why they got Malik Jackson. Now you can't double him. Wow. Wow. Uh, when the tough weather hits, and we still got a few weeks of winter, I was just talking to a friend of mine back in Connecticut. He goes, I think winter's done. And I said, oh, that's kind of cocky of you. It's the first week of March. Don't go crazy. Uh, they had a big storm. Now he feels, you know, it's going to be 50 degrees going forward. But that, that means only one thing in the east. Now you got spring, and that's about eight weeks. And when the tough weather hits, you want Michelin premium wiper blades, smart flex technology, Work for your windshield, unparalleled, smear-free, streak-free, squeak-free, long-lasting. Light drizzle, a lot of rain. You're going to get a little bit of everything for the next 8 to 10 weeks of spring. You'll want wiper blades designed to truly hug your windshield. Better visibility, see more clearly, drive more safely. Walmart's got them, Pet Boys, Amazon, all sorts of retailers. Be ready for whatever lies ahead. 
Smart Flex Technology, best on the market, Michelin Premium Wiper Blades. Walmart, Pep Boys, Amazon, other fine retailers.